You were gonna do a song. Beaver, this is rap, the music of the street. Not Pine Street. You, know, you guys really didn't like it? Oh no, you were terrific. It's just that the Nancy Sinatra version holds such fond memories for me. I think you both worked so hard that you deserve something special. Come on. And Oliver, will you do something with those shoelaces? Grandma, rappers don't tie their shoes. It's part of the image. <laughs> I thought disco was bad. <laughs> Can't home from your date already? <sighs> if I was smart, I never would have gone out to begin with. I thought Arlene was pretty cute. That wasn't her, Dad. I mean, it's this whole ritual of dating. It seems so futile. I mean, you finally find a girl you like. You ask her out. You meet her parents. You drop a week's pay. And, and for what? I mean, to find out that after a half hour, you have nothing more to say to each other? And then Monday, you start all over again. Does it get any better in college? Not really. It doesn't? No. There you are, far away from home in a big, unfriendly campus. The girls won't look at you because you're a freshman. And the guys think you're a nerd because you haven't got a date. Thanks, Dad. So you find yourself in the basement of the student union, playing pinball with the foreign exchange students. Good night. And if you don't get into a decent fraternity, you might as well kiss your social life goodbye. Hey, wait a minute. Did I tell you about the sorority girls? Boy, what a bunch of snobs. Yes, yes, Mr. Goody. Now, I know we're three days late, but you gotta understand. I'm putting this yearbook together with spit elbow grease and a bunch of rejects from the audiovisual club. Friday, you're finding a new printer. Yeah, yes, Mr. Gooding. Friday the 25th it is. The 18th? Uh, but, but, sir. Yes, sir. There's no way we can get this thing together by the 18th. Will you relax, Freddy? Relax. I'm about to be the first editor in school history to put out a yearbook with 132 blank pages. Hey, well, at least there'll be plenty of space for everybody to sign them. <laughs> okay. I know how you can cut a few pages. Just uh, scrap that section on the cafeteria workers. Great, you get them mad and the food will be terrible next year. <laughs> oh, we care, we're seniors. Kip, I appreciate your feeble attempt at humor, but I need to find someone to do the senior photo layout by tomorrow. 300 pictures by tomorrow? <laughs> Good luck. Look at these guys. Exactly my point. That's why I need someone trustworthy, reliable. Someone who, if fired, would find themselves half a credit short of graduating. <laughs> seen him in a while. Oh, that's right. They tried him as an adult. <laughs> All these faces, friends, classmates, and those guys who always hang out with the janitor. <laughs> wow, 
Charlene Maitland. Seems like a million years ago. What a cute kid. Oh, Chelsea Morgan. Ah, oh, what a smile. No wonder my attendance was so good junior year. Hmm, maybe I had a better time in high school than I thought I did. <laughs> Lori Richardson. Oh, boy, was I crazy about her. Of course, who wouldn't be? Come on, that's ancient history. You got work to do. Let's see. We do six kids a page with captions below the pictures. We... Ori Richardson. Good night. Good night. Good night, Kip. I don't see anything wrong with this picture, other than the fact that it's not included in the layout, which is supposed to be on Gooding's desk in 13 hours. It's not a good picture. We have to reshoot it. Kip, out of 300 senior pictures, five were good. Okay, fine. <laughs> You're the editor-in-chief. If you don't care what you put your name on. Kip, you want us to hold up our printer who's giving us diamond stitch binding at no extra cost, just so that we can get a new picture of... Laurie Richardson, of course. Buddy, I'm only thinking of the good of the yearbook. Right, and when my father buys a case of beer, he's only thinking of the brewery workers. <laughs> okay, look, since I saw her picture last night, I just keep thinking, well, maybe fate dealt Laurie and I a bad hand. A bad hand? Kip, you were playing tongue tag with her best friend. <laughs> so I made an error in judgment, but I paid for it. I mean, Lori has to have some fond memories of us. And of her junior year in England, where she met her boyfriend from Oxford. Big deal. Guy goes to a college named after a shoe. <laughs> Come on, Freddie. Give me a photographer. I just need an excuse to see her. I don't have a photographer. He's covering the Stinky Lutz appeal. Besides, the last time you saw Lori, the woman threatened to come after you with hot scissors. I know the odds are long, but you know, I just keep thinking, what if? I mean, what if there's still something there, Freddie? What if Lori and I were meant for each other? What if she still has those scissors? <laughs> I'll dedicate the yearbook to you. Kip. Hi. 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 Uh, Freddie said a photographer is coming by, but he didn't say it was going to be you. Oh, yeah, I, I kind of asked Freddie to let me come. You see, I've been thinking a lot about you lately. Just bring everything in here, Kip. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, I, uh, I've been thinking about you. Would you like something to drink? A soda, iced tea? <laughs> wow. It was really being to photography. Yeah, well, I am when I have the right subject. Oh, still the smooth talker. Say, remember those poems you used to write to me? Softly stars shine in the night so still, I cast my love from a lonely hill. For life is bleak, and I cannot sleep when we're kept so far apart. Oh, you remember that. Yeah, I found it when I was cleaning my room. It was so corny, I couldn't forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, Kip, seems like ages since we've even talked to each other. Yeah. How long has it been? It was two years ago at the sophomore blood drive. You gave me crackers and apple juice and told me to lie down. I remember. You do? Yeah. We we're 17 units over our goal. <laughs> I'm really glad you're here, Kip. Oh? Yeah. I thought I looked terrible in my picture. Uh, well, I thought you looked great. What did your uh, boyfriend think about it? Oh, Leslie. I'd really rather not talk about him. Sometimes he can be such a jerk. Yeah, well, guys can be that way. <clears throat> well, I'm all set. Yeah, me too. 
You know, I, I've been thinking back lately, and uh, I think what we had was, uh, it was pretty special. Really? Yeah. We did have some good times. We were so young. Oh, infants, babies. I mean, teeny tiny babies. Oh, baby. Is something wrong? I, uh, I think I need a light meter. <laughs> um, get... Maybe you should turn it on. Good idea. <laughs> Are you getting a reading? Am I ever? Um, you're so pretty. I mean, I, I'd really like to capture the. Um... Well, I, I don't think you'd understand the the technical term, actually. <laughs> I just really like to capture the, um... <gasps> I'm sorry. I, I don't know what happened. Neither do I. <sighs> Sophie's secret is out. Is this the first time she's been caught stealing? It's something a grandmother can't ignore. She thinks I'm not good enough to be the mother of her grandchild. I just I don't think she's capable of bringing up my granddaughter. Could Sophie's worst fear come true? To raise that child myself. Mars presents Home and Away tonight at 7. Neil Diamond's greatest hits, 1966 to 1992. The ultimate Neil Diamond collection. Neil Diamond's 37 greatest songs and a 48-page booklet at the incredible low price of only $29.95 double CD and $22.95 double cassette. At this price, you won't find a better Neil Diamond collection. Plus, check out the music video, Greatest Hits Live. Introducing Beethoven, the movie star, who's cuddly and cute but grows and grows and grows. Play the Beethoven game, call 0055 and you could win a full-size Beethoven toy or one of ten toy puppies. As well as a 224 family pack, here's another great value way to buy Kleenex quality. A new family pack with 275. 274. 273, 272, 271, 270, 269, 260. Are you hungry? Oh, give me your horse. When you've worked up an appetite, unpack a Cadbury picnic. With a great combination of caramel, wafer, rice crisps, roasted peanuts, and Cadbury milk chocolate that make it such a delicious mouthful. Cut, 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 cut! What do you think this is? Picnic? When you've worked up an appetite, unpack a Cadbury picnic. Whoa! Hey, wow. Struth, the compost heap. Oh, sad. Wonder tape, it's great. Please, well, not the pig swill. Oh, yes, I use sad. Oh, no. Oil. It's the original oil eater. I used the sad soap on that one. Oh, way to go! Oh. Sad, Sad, wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> Sad, the best advice you can give anyone. It's guaranteed to be far less gentlemanly than the encounter of 100 years ago. Collingwood and Carlton making history in the centenary match live Thursday. Thank you very much, Mr. Stevens, and uh, if I see Mr. Haskell, I'll be sure and pass that information along. <laughs> Is he going? 
one yet. Come on out, you coward. We just failed our building inspection. Hey, what'd you expect? Anyone with an ounce of common sense would have had a C note in their palm when they shook his hand. Now you gotta replace all your heating ducts. Not me, you. Molly, pal, your beef is with the subcontractor. So where do you stand in all this, besides the closet? I'm the general contractor. My job is to find you the cheapest subcontractor, then pass those savings along to you. Some savings? Now it's gonna cost me twice as much. Come on, Eddie, we had a deal. You promised me that we wouldn't have these kind of problems. Molly, let me tell you something about the construction business. And when I'm bidding a job, I'll tell the customer whatever he wants to hear. <laughs> You should hear the whopper I told Monsignor O'Keefe to get the rectory deal. <laughs> Look, Eddie, I want you to get on the phone and get that guy over here and get this thing fixed now. Hey, Wally, let's not be so hasty. After all, with the global warming trend, you may not need those heating ducts. <laughs> hey, all right, all right. Hey, Uncle Wally, how's it going? Ah, fair. What's on your mind? Well, I'm sure you heard the great news about Lori and me getting back together. Isn't she the one that gave you mono? No, that was her best friend. <clears throat> anyway, um, <clears throat> we've got this big 50s party coming up on Friday, and, uh, well, I know you'll probably say no, but, I mean, Lori would really be impressed if... Uh, you want to borrow the T-Bird, huh? Stupid request. You remember what happened last time you borrowed it. Okay, I promise. No making out while the car is moving. <laughs> Look, Kip, I gotta go. I gotta pick up Ollie and Kelly at rehearsal. Oh, come on, Uncle Wally. I know how much your T-Bird means to you, but... I mean, with Lori and me... I mean, it's not like we met on vacation. It's destiny. I mean, I can feel it. Feel it in your dad's car. <laughs> yeah, Kippy, old man. I couldn't help overhearing. So, you're trying to impress the main squeeze, huh? I just want to make every day special for her. Yeah, you'll outgrow that. But until you do, just keep in mind what the foundation of every truly meaningful relationship is. Oh, what's that? Jewelry. <laughs> Such as, eh? Oh, where'd you get all those? Hey, I got a buddy that's a collector. Oh, yeah? He collects watches? No, he collects debts. But sometimes he ends up with watches. Huh? Notice the detail? The craftsmanship? Something scratched out on the back here. What are you talking about? That's brushed chrome. No, no I, I can read it. To my darling... Uh, fine. Don't take the brush chrome. Hey, look at this. Huh? You give her this, baby, you're gonna have to pry her off of you with a crowbar. <laughs> I can let it go for 50 bucks, and I'll throw in a lovely velveteen gift box. Does it come with a guarantee? 90 days. 90 days if it breaks? 90 days if you get caught with it. <laughs> Dog. Come in. Oh, Lori. Boy, oh boy, wait till you see what I got you. Kip, I wasn't expecting you. Uh, Cindy, Kip. Uh huh. Uh, can you excuse us, please? Okay. Close your eyes and give me your hand. <laughs> you love this. Huh? Do you love it? Yeah. <laughs> I knew it. Mwah! Oh, that's some dress. <laughs> Thanks. It's a little fancy for a 50s party. Kip, it's a wedding dress. Wedding? Oh, whoa. Wedding. I mean, Lori, we are crazy about each other, but I don't know if I'm ready for marriage. Kip, I'm marrying Leslie. Leslie? Oh, Let me try and explain. Please, you don't have to explain. I understand perfectly. You led me on, and now you're marrying some guy with a girl's name. Look, have you ever known someone where it almost worked out, but it didn't? And then later on, you thought about that person and wondered, what if? Yeah. That's how I felt when you turned up on my doorstep. And I couldn't marry Leslie until I found out whether you and I were meant for each other. Which at least half of us thought we were. Kip, it was really nice. And I feel closer to you than I did before. Great. But it just isn't it. It? I mean, I feel it. Don't you feel it? <laughs> but it doesn't have to end this way. Maybe we should consider counseling. I'm sorry, Kip. Oh. 
Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Give me the watch. <laughs> so humiliated in my life. You broke Mr. Hansen's music stand. Hey, I was willing to finish the act when I came to. I told you to tie your shoelaces. It's not cool to tie your shoelaces. Oh, but it is cool to be helped off the stage by the school nurse. <laughs> I don't think my grandchildren were born to rap. What's the matter, Kip? Nothing. Kip? Lori and I are through. Oh. I'm sorry. What happened? She's getting married to her boyfriend from Oxford. All I was to her was just this, like, last fling. Oh. Well, at least you got flung. <laughs> I had such a good feeling about Lori. I could have sworn this was it. If every romance turned out the way people thought they would, there wouldn't be any songs on the radio. was in love with her. Oh, I see. And so now you're hurt, and you think you've lost your one chance for happiness. Excuse me, Grandma, but you know, I think I better be alone. Kip, wait a minute. When I was about your age, there was this fellow, Tom Randall. His father drove a Packard. Tom did the greatest imitation of FDR. <laughs> it was uncanny. And I was crazy about him. And one day he moved away, and I was brokenhearted. You know what? Two years later, I met your grandfather. Grandma, you just don't forget the person who breaks your heart. True. And through the years, I've thought about Tom. And I've wondered if I could have loved him and if it would have worked out. And? And I think it might have. But I married Ward. And we had the most wonderful life together. Kip, you're 17 years old. It's a long race. Lots of ways to get to the finish line. I hope you're right. I got a pretty good track record. Yeah. <laughs> so, Grandma, whatever happened with you and this Tom Randall guy? I mean, did you ever see each other again? Well, that's another story. Contestants are out to grab the big bucks, but who'll wind up with the most? Probably be a big finish. Find out on Wheel of Fortune, 5.30 today of The Family Feud. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Matt Munro. Born free, as free as the wind. Together with Mr. Andy Williams. Three coins in the fountain. The finest voices ever recorded. Walk away. 18 of their greatest songs, together for the no first time, the very best of Matt Munro and Andy Williams. Out now on Hitbound. Cowabunga, dudes! Test your skill and win your very own Turtles pinball machine. Call 0055 and play pinball simulation. It's bodacious! Get the highest score and you'll win this Turtles pinball machine. Call 0055 and win! It's nearly bedtime, so how about a hot chocolate made with pure, fresh milk? Hot from your microwave. Now that's a nightcap. Pure, fresh milk. Good night.
Make Mum's dreams come true on Mother's Day with our exclusive nightwear. Beautiful satin from Christian Dior. Diamond cut pyjamas. A satin nightshirt by Femme. A Hilton chemise and gown. Or a cosy gown from Givoni. And to make her feel extra special, we've got some bonus gifts for you. Wednesday, Betty plans a holiday. You only need your passport if you're going overseas. Oh, and Dunk Island's not overseas. But then, a shocking discovery. I bet you got a finger stuck in a pencil sharpener again. She's never been christened. Oh, no, what will the say? What's Polish for tough titty? On the Hey Dad. Then at eight, you never know what you might learn. It's not hung well. You got a problem, right, Al? On Home Improvement. Speak for yourself, Tim. Catch TV's funniest new comedy right after Hey Dad, Wednesday on 7. There's loads of fun with Agro's Cartoon Connection next, followed by Mr. Ed. Tonight on Beyond 2000, Brian Smith looks at a golf course that's more than just green in colour. Dr. John Darcy peers into the future of ultrasound medicine, and Tracy Cura discovers a new laptop computer. Beyond 2000, 8.30 tonight. <laughs> It's guaranteed to be far less.